So last week, I had the opportunity to interview Tomo Fujita for my podcast. Now, if you don't know who Tomo Fujita is, he's a Berklee College of Music professor, and uh, he's got a huge online following on Instagram, and he's known for being an incredible guitar player and instructor. Now, if you want to check out the full interview, the podcast is linked in the description box down below. But he brought up something that I found really interesting when I asked him about ways of learning guitar and getting out of ruts in your playing or learning process. He brought up limitations and the power of adding limitations to your practice or playing routine in order to break out of ruts or add strengths to your areas of weakness in your playing and musicianship. And I've been thinking about that a lot since the interview. So I want to try something today in this video. One of my favorite things to do here on this YouTube channel is write and produce tracks. I like to do it a lot when I'm highlighting a piece of gear in a video or trying to teach some kind of concept. And it was a big part of why I wanted to start this YouTube channel to begin with. I truly love producing music. It's one of my favorite things to do. But I have found myself in a bit of a rut recently when it comes to writing and production. I haven't been able to get fresh ideas out as easily as I have in the past. So today I'm gonna to try limiting myself. The way I'm gonna do that is by using one guitar with one pickup. This is the new Novo Solus. That's the newest guitar design from Dennis Fano and the team at Novo. And this one is actually the prototype. If you were at Winter Nam or saw any of the videos of Winter Nam, you might have seen or even played this guitar. And I've been lucky enough to have this guitar in my possession on loan for a few weeks now. I've gigged with it, I've used it in videos, but today, I'm going to see how much I can get out of one guitar with one pickup. I'm going to try and record an entire track with layers of guitar parts, layers of sounds that are different and complement each other and work with each other only using this guitar and probably a bass. So, okay, technically two guitars, but if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Rhett Scholl. Be sure to subscribe down below. And if it's your first time, be sure to click that bell icon so you can be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live here on the channel every Sunday night. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the gear we're gonna be using today. Before we jump over to Logic, I wanna quickly take you through my signal flow for the day. In the spirit of limitation, I'm gonna be using the same amp for the whole session. And that's gonna be this orange AD30. This is new to me. These are really cool. They're from the early 2000s and it's essentially like an AC30 on steroids. This will be my first time recording with it, so I'm really excited to see what it'll do. From the orange, I'm going into the Universal Audio Ox box. I've got that currently on loan. I'm just checking it out to see what I think about it. And there will probably be a video on the aux uh, to follow in the next couple weeks. So if you're watching this in the future and that video's out, you can check it out here. Now, the general idea here is to utilize some different playing techniques to get different tones out of the guitar. With that being said, I will be using some different effects with the guitar and the amp, but I'm gonna try and keep those to a minimum as well. I really wanna see what I can do with as minimal a setup as possible. So I've got a Logic session pulled up, ready to go. I'm gonna start by laying down a pretty basic drum groove and seeing what I can come up with. Okay, so I've got a sound in mind for this track. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of War on Drugs, a lot of Young the Giant, and I've been kind of inspired by a lot of those sounds that both of those bands and artists get on their records. So today, I want to make something that's kind of like a, what I would call, I don't know, like a landscape song. Picture driving across the desert at dusk. That's what I want this song to feel like. The first thing I'm going to do is lay down a scratch guitar part so I can start to get a drum groove laid down. Uh, I've got something in mind. It's a little progression I've been messing around with for a while. I've got a tempo dialed in here in Logic, and I'm just going to lay down a scratch guitar part here. <laughs> So again, that's a scratch part. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's probably not gonna end up in the final mix, but it's just something to use as a roadmap. Now I've got a drum kit 
pulled up here and I'm going to do a really simple drum groove because I'm a terrible drum programmer. And realistically, I just want this to be a pretty straight ahead drum part anyways. All right, so the basic drum groove and the scratch guitar are done. I'm gonna move on to the bass. This will be the only time during this video I use something that's not the solus. And generally when I'm writing something, I like to do bass early on because I usually will come up with an idea or a bass line or a chord progression that I will then use to inspire everything else I'm doing on top of it. So basically I've got the drums looped for a while in Logic and I'm gonna start off by just playing over the scratch guitar part and then I've cut the scratch guitar part and I'm just gonna try and improvise a chord progression on the bass until I come up with something that I like and then I'll put that down and move on to the next part of the song. All right, so there was some stuff in there that I liked. Uh, you'll notice that what I was playing actually wasn't lining up with the kick pattern, and that's because I feel like I wanna move on to this kind of like. Kind of kick pattern. So that'll mean I'll probably redo some of the drums, but yeah, I'm gonna try this a couple more times and then uh, nail something together. I think I've got a good rough outline nailed down and now I'm gonna put down another scratch guitar part over the top just to get a basic foundation laid. And I'm gonna try and stick with a similar sort of tone that I had for that intro part, this kind of. I think it works well as a basic rhythm part. So um, let's see what happens. first guitar part, that intro arpeggiated thing with a little delay. From the Strymon Volante, it's just giving it some depth and some weight. I like having that little pitch modulation in there. It kind of gives it some width. So I'm gonna track this part and then start layering on top of things. Okay, so there's one other part I want to add before I move on to the chorus and bridge sections here, and it's a detail part. Uh, that's gonna sit on top of that main guitar riff. And this is the first time I'm faced with the challenge of making this guitar have multiple voices, sound like something else. So what I'm gonna do is actually not change anything about the amp or the delay sound I'm using at all. I'm literally just gonna change how I'm playing. So I'm gonna drop the pick and I'm gonna play with my fingers and I think the part I wanna go with is like uh, is something like this. Kind of a spacey, ethereal sort of thing. By switching to my fingers, I'm trying to make it sound more like I'm playing on a neck pickup that doesn't actually exist here. I don't want the notes to be as present as the other part. I want this to sit underneath it and just kind of be a sparkly little detail piece. So I'm gonna find exactly what part I'm gonna play and then play that down.
All right, so I'm thinking something like that will work. Uh, I'm gonna nail down that part, lay it down, and then move on to the chorus and bridge section. What I'm going for here is to make this Esquire style guitar sound more like a Les Paul. I wanna mimic a humbucker sound, and this is something that you can do with just about any single coil guitar, no matter if you have one or three pickups. I found that most guitar players, myself included, really underutilize the controls on their guitars, the volume and tone controls. There are so many possibilities between these two knobs right here for tone shaping of all different types. So right now what I'm gonna do, without adding any pedals or anything, we're still just using the guitar straight into the front of the amp, I'm gonna try and make this Tele pickup feel more like a humbucker, like a PAF. So I'm gonna start by pushing the gain on the amp up a little bit to get a little more grit and drive. And then I'm gonna roll the tone off and change where I'm picking in relation to the pickup to try and get a little bit more mid range and a little bit more low end while rolling off a little bit of the high end. Now here's the thing about humbuckers to remember. Humbucker guitars like Les Pauls and 335s, anything that has a PAF are actually pretty bright pickups. They're not super dark. So I don't wanna lose too much of the top end. I'm just trying to bring in more mid range. So the part I'm going for here is something that's just going to kind of sit with the bass and add a little bit more mid range and depth for me to play on top of with a lead line or some kind of part later in the song. So I've got this chord progression here. That sounds like a telly, but if I start to roll the tone control off here, bring my volume up. And then if I roll my volume back a little more. And then if I wanna get a little bit more mid-range out of it and take it less out of Telecaster land, I'm gonna pick closer to the neck. Now it's getting a little dark for my taste, so I might roll some of the tone back in on the guitar. And that's sounding less like a Telecaster and more like a Les Paul to my ear. Compare that to tone all the way up. need one pickup. All right, cool. So things are moving right along, but I think it's time for a slide part. Now, so far, the only effects I've been using are a little bit of delay here and there and some of the spring reverb here in the Strymon Volante. That's the delay pedal I'm using today. But all the gain and everything is just coming from the amp and the guitar. So what I think I'm gonna do is go for kind of like a really warm neck pickup kind of sound uh, with the guitar. So right now, this is just the guitar and the amp together. <laughs> And that's the part I'm sort of thinking of doing is like a... <laughs> then maybe doubling that down the line with, uh, you know, maybe an octave up uh, somewhere up here and, and adding some reverb or something. I don't know, but I'm hearing something really warm and kind of crunchy there. <laughs> So I've got the tone rolled almost all the way down on this pickup here, and I'm playing with my fingers a little closer to the neck. And uh, that's giving me this sound here. So I'm gonna lay this slide part down, and I think we're in the home stretch here. There's something else that's missing from the chorus section. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It 
it's the next day and I'm getting ready to wrap up this track. Uh, I just listened back down to it after sleeping on it and resting my ears a little bit. And I think we're almost there. I do want to add a couple more detail parts, especially to the intro to kind of fill it out a little bit. And maybe there's some kind of instrumental section I can put over the chorus. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. I don't want this to be too guitar-y, but the, the whole point of this challenge is to, you know, do as much with one guitar and one pickup as possible. So maybe I should just embrace it for what it is. But yeah, I think maybe two or three more parts and we'll be done. So for the intro, I want something kind of spacey and vibey. And I'm not getting it with just the guitar and the amp. So I'm adding the Specular Tempest from GFI system because it does that kind of thing really well. Maybe it's cheating. It goes against the spirit of the challenge, but I think this is what the track needs. So this is what I'm going to do. For this sound, I want the guitar to be nice and soft and round like we've been doing in some of the other parts. So I've rolled the tone off to about half and I'm picking with my fingers really high up on the neck and it's giving me this kind of tone with the reverb. So I'm gonna try doubling that intro part there and maybe just tuck this in underneath it and I think that's gonna give me the overall feel that I'm going for. happy with the way that track turned out. Overall, I think it was a good exercise in limitation for me, forcing myself to stay on one guitar and one amp the whole time and a couple of effects, but you know. But hopefully you saw the tonal possibilities that are available to you on your guitar just by changing how you're playing it. Don't be afraid of the volume and tone control. They're there for a reason and try playing in different parts of the guitar closer to the neck, closer to the bridge with, with a pick, without a pick. There really is a ton of tonal variation available on an instrument. And I think that's part of why we fall into ruts as guitar players sometimes is we just play the instrument the same way over and over again. I know I do. I had a lot of fun making this video. It's a little bit different than I normally do when I write tracks for the channel, I don't normally document it, but maybe I should start doing it more. Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you want to find out more about some of the gear I used in today's video, those will be linked in the description box. Those are affiliate links. So if you buy something through there, I earn a small commission, which really helps me out in making these videos. You can also find links to the green room down there and my tone course which will be available in the very near future. Or if you're watching this in the future, it's available now. That will be linked 
down below as well. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell icon to be notified when I'm going live here on the channel every Sunday night and posting new videos every week. Hope you enjoyed the video. My name's Rhett Schull and remember there is no plan B.